given how quickly the lithium market or that demand um, for lithium is increasing, we want to make sure that our technology is advanced enough to slip in and become a realistic uh, kind of means of supply. You know, if it takes us 10 years to get that technology, we're going to miss the boat. And so we're really pushing to get something, you know, real and commercial within the next two to three years. My next guest is Stephen Vassaloudis. He's the CEO and founder of Novalith Technologies, which is a private company from Australia. Steve, welcome. Morning. Thank you very much for having me on. You bet. It's a pleasure. Steve, let's, uh, let's dive right into it. Your technology is focused on extracting lithium from hard rock sources, correct? Correct, yeah. Can you give us just a quick overview of what the technology is and what it's for? Our technology uses a novel, novel approach to removing lithium from hard rock resources. And we're also doing some work into the, the soft rock, such as the clays. Um, but in a nutshell, we use uh, supercritical CO2 and water to directly extract and refine that uh, lithium as a lithium carbonate. Um, and at the back end of the process, you can also convert to lithium hydroxide if need be. But really what we're trying to do is negate the requirements for strong acids such as sulfuric acid, which is pretty much the go-to tried and true method. Okay, so your process then inserts into the, into the line and replaces the, the sort of sulfuric acid portion of it. But so do you start with uh, essentially extracting the rock, crushing the rock, and then introducing it to your process? Yeah, yeah. So the front end and the back end is very similar. Um, so we still have to go from, you know, a rock to a concentrate, from a concentrate uh, being, say, an alpha um, spodumene to a beta spodumene. So you still have the calcination step up front. Um, but then we pretty much step in from that point. And instead of having, say, the acid roasting, the impurity removal steps, you're converting from sulfate to either hydroxide or carbonate. Uh, we basically take all of those unit operations out and replace it with our, our life health process which is a carbonic acid leach. Uh, and at the back end, we can still crystallize out or uh, we'll precipitate out that, that lithium carbonate in very much the same way. And so where are you at in the development of this? Are you pilot testing yet or is it still in the lab? Yep, so we're pilot testing at the moment. Um, we've actually got a couple of reactors uh, running and a couple of systems operating. Um, we're trying to characterize as many of the different types of uh, spodumene and other kind of soft and hard rock resources that we can at this stage. Um, one of the great benefits of our technology is it's uh, very... Uh, I guess, selective with regards to lithium. And because of that, the effect of impurities uh, is not nearly as significant in our process versus, uh, you know, the conventionally using a much stronger acid. And we're just trying to quantify and really benchmark how broad um, the application of our technology could be. So does it have applications for brine-based lithium? At this stage, we don't think so. It'll probably be only your, your rock sources. Um, reason being with, you know, brines, there's a lot of uh, so water to process, there's a lot of cool new technologies in the DLE space coming to light. And at the moment, we we're trying to solve the environmental issues and the cost issues um, around the, say, the spodumene and hard rock resources, as well as your clays. I mean, especially if you're looking at, say, your clays, you have a tremendous amount of rock to process with a relatively small amount of lithium. And if you're using the conventional process, your reagent costs are, I mean, very, very significant. Um, and, and, you know, never mind for both the soft and the hard rocks, uh, where you have to then produce all of this bulk, say, sulfuric acid and other reagents. And, you know, from an environmental and cost point of view, you know, having a large sulfuric acid plant to then kind of, you know, feed the reagent to your, your refinery, um, it's, if we can avoid that, I think, you know, it would generally be better in the future. And you'd obviously save a ton of money. You know, the cost of sulfuric acid is not cheap. Um, whereas if using, say, CO2, which we can either get from the calcination process and recover that CO2, which would have otherwise gone to waste, uh, or from supporting industries. Um, you know, if we couple this to, say, SMR, um, turning some blue hydrogen, you know, I guess a lighter shade of green, uh, and capture that CO2 and fix that CO2 in our process, I mean, that's really a win-win. Is the grade of the lithium source relevant to the cost of production in your process? From what we've seen, uh, no, and it's because of that selectivity. So we're getting really good extraction and recovery rates uh, from the ores that we've been testing. Um, and again, because it's kind of relatively uh, insensitive to the impurities, um, we're finding that we're still getting great recoveries at a higher and lower percent of, of uh, lithium oxide. So then how soon until this process would be available to all of the hard rock miners of lithium in the world? Well, I'd love to say next year. So we're pushing very hard in our pilot stage at the moment and we're doing a lot of, um, I guess, additional kind of R&D and pilot work. And we're looking to start the design for our commercial demonstration plant towards the back end of this year. Um, so we're kind of really in kind of a data accumulation step at the moment, getting as much data across as many resources as we possibly can. 
And then off the back end of that, we'll be looking to build our first little commercial demo plant, which we expect, you know, design commencing end of this year and looking to operate uh, the year following. So probably 23, 24, that'll be an operation. Apart from the input savings, which are apparent, are there CapEx differentials between the traditional process and your process? Because it's such a simple process, again, a single step uh, versus a two step. So going from, say, sulfate to whatever you want. With us, it's carbonate directly from the, the rock. Um, and because of that, there's a lot of unit operation savings and less kit means less cost and also less space. What is the model for you to uh, roll out this technology? Is it like a technology as a service platform? Will you put it onto brine or rather hard rock operations that you have ownership in? At this stage, it's pretty fluid. And once we've developed the technology, it's likely that we'll be a technology vendor. And so we'll have this you know, great piece of tech, validate a resource, particular resource owner. Uh, and then work in partnership with, you know, say it's a greenfield site. I mean, we don't want to become a, an engineering uh, design house or big EPC. Um, we really want to kind of keep our core tech to ourselves uh, and then help to distribute that as widely as, as possible. And so we'll probably provide that to the resource owner uh, in partnership with a larger EPC um, or work directly with the resource owner themselves if they have that capability to upgrade their plant. Strikes me that clays are, I mean, they're, they're the most problematic source rock for lithium. And so is the process different from spodumene relative to clays? Well, the big change is we don't calcine up front. Now, at least in the work we've done, there's no need to calcine. So you get a you know, bit of a CO2 saving, so to speak, uh, that side of things. Um, but our process flow sheets are very, very similar for the clays and the spodumenes. Uh, and that's, again, another big benefit of our process because we're getting quite, um, well, actually great recoveries. Uh, we don't need to then put additional bits of kit on, uh, and that's selectivity too. So we don't need to put additional bits of kit on to deal with, you know, tremendous volumes of rock or um, <laughs> a tremendous volume of impurities that you then have to deal with. Given that, you know, in clays, you're talking about about 1,000 ppm, you know, plus or minus. Um, whereas your your spodumines are, you know, as percent, anywhere between, say, raw spodumene, 1 to 2%, and for your concentrates, you know, high-quality concentrates sitting at, you know, between 5 and 6. Um, so massive difference in terms of the amount of lithium you have versus uh, kind of the volume of impurities that you'd have to process and deal with. Do you have a conceptual target average cost, all-in cost of per ton of production? So all the modeling we've, we've been doing thus far, we're looking at, you know, sub $4,000 a ton uh, for lithium carbonate. Uh, but again, this is still very, very early stage. So I have to put a big kind of disclaimer on that one. Um, we need to do further, further work on this at a larger scale to kind of really validate those costs and also normalize those costs for the region. You know, putting a plant in, um, say, Canada or North America is going to have a very, very different cost base to putting a plant in, say, Western Australia, uh, Europe, or China, given that the cost of um, you know, utilities, reagents, uh, whether CO2 has a value or not. So all of our cost modeling thus far has assumed we're purchasing in that CO2, as well as using a very dirty source of CO2, which we need to then scrub and, and pressurize up, um, whereas we might find that, hey, we're actually getting carbon credits in which case it becomes a more attractive proposition. So what sort of opportunity would there be for investors who might be interested in participating in your success should the opportunity present itself? Well, we have to fund our commercial demo plant. Um, and so we're probably looking to open up a Series A uh, towards the middle of, of the end of this year um, to get some cash in the door to help us actually build that plant. And so at that stage, we'll be putting out, well, we'll basically be opening the doors to, to investors. And if there's any interested investors, feel free to, to reach out and contact us either via the website or I think I can probably just you know, bug you for my personal detail. That's uh, novalith.com.au for those who are interested. Uh, Steve, how has it been, how much has gone into the development of the technology? What sort of has been the historical trajectory of getting it to where it is today? Yeah, so a quick history on, on the technology and where it originated. So it was developed um, by you know, a really, really great professor called Dr. Brian Haynes at the University of Sydney. And this is several years ago. And then off the back of that, um, we acquired the IP uh, outright from the university and then started kind of trying to commercialize it uh, with all haste um, in August last year. And so we completed our seed funding rounds. We raised two and a half million Australian dollars, uh, led by the Clean Energy Finance Corporation in Australia and supported by the Granton Foundation out of the US. Uh, and all of that money has pretty much gone into doing um, kind of scallop work and the original test work performed at the university. And so operating at a couple hundred times scale relative to what uh, they were doing. Um, and also now building a number of these reactors in parallel. Given how quickly the lithium market, all that demand um, for lithium is increasing, we want to make sure that our technology is advanced enough to slip in and become a realistic 
uh, kind of means of supply. You know, if it takes us 10 years to get that technology, we're going to miss the boat. And so we're really pushing to get something, you know, real and commercial within the next two to three years. Well, Steve, sounds fascinating. I am going to be looking a lot more closely at it and probably participating in one round or another. I appreciate your time today and thanks for joining me. Great. Well, thank you so much for the time. Really enjoy that. You bet. Bye for now.